According to LinkedIn job posts in quarter 2 of 2025, software engineer is still the most in demand job. Hey everyone, welcome to Scale is Europe channel and today we're going to look into the roadmap of becoming a software engineer in 2026. In this video we're going to cover everything from what does software engineer do? What are the skill sets you would need? The salary range and also a complete roadmap on how you can get started becoming a software engineer. And before we start with the video, make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our upcoming videos. As I already mentioned, the most in-demand job in quarter two of 2025 was software engineering, and you can see the second is salesperson and the third is nurse. So you can basically go to this article and check a bit more about what are the top ten most in-demand job roles. In case you are not looking for to become a software engineer, you can check out the other most in-demand jobs as well. But again, even though there is AI now. people were thinking that software engineering jobs will go down but that's not the case they need more engineers to build more ai tools as well now let's get into the video so what does a software engineer actually do i've summarized it in three pointers so what people usually think is as a software engineer they write code yes they do write code but that is just one part of the job now let me just quickly give you an uh, summary so design resilient systems not just features engineers are in just typing lines they are crafting scalable maintainable systems across cloud edge ai first apps and microservices there are a lot of jargon here but to put it very simply software engineers build software not just code so now if there is a software that is built the software has to be hosted somewhere and then it has to be maintained later and also for example the software right now has 100 users it might have 1 million users in a month's time so you will have to plan all of this before you even build the software so that's what a software engineer does they plan feature they plan the entire software and also writing code is one of their skill sets again in an interview they're going to ask you about code they're going to ask you about data structures and algorithms they're going to ask you about system design but those are the core concepts that you have to learn to clear in an interview but once you are inside coding might be 20 to 25% of your job the rest would be all of this that is you will be looking into writing documentation you will be looking into solving certain problems right uh, engineer human ai collaboration so right now the modern software engineer partners with ai agents prompting them validating outputs and enforcing architecture and maintainability that is if you are a seasoned software engineer it will be much easier for you to use ai because you would know what exactly to ask for and you would just need code snippets which are repeatable so those code snippets you can generate using ai certain problem statements can't still be solved with ai because you don't know the solution sometimes you can't directly get a solution from ai so now you have to know how exactly to use these ai tools to make yourself a better software engineer and finally keep security and compliance front and center so you might think there are cyber security experts who will take care of the security aspect but it doesn't work like that because as a software engineer you also have to secure your code you have to encapsulate it uh, let's say you have an api key of uh, open ai and you're using it in your code you can't simply use it directly in your code you need to add it to your environment variables so that it's safeguarded from external use so that you can access that particular application using their api but others can't do it so there is a lot more things that you will have to know as a software engineer so as it's written here engineers now integrate security into the development pipeline especially with rising regulation and expansion of ai workloads so this is not just about writing code a software engineer does more than that to simplify that i have a picture here so a software engineer will plan on how the software is going to look for example you get the requirements let's say from a product manager and then accordingly you sit and discuss what exactly uh, the software should look like you plan around it and then you start designing how the software is going to look like once that is approved you move on to the development phase and then you use unit tests to test certain features and how they work and then push it to a testing team to check if your software is working properly and then you deploy it and then once deployed you still have to maintain that software so our software engineers work doesn't end once they finish the software and ship it their work will still continue till the software is live and running right this is a simple example now moving on to the next skill set of a software engineer now again this is very common you guys would already know about the computer science fundamentals that one should learn that is over here programming languages database management software development tools specializations these are some technical skills that are mentioned here now let me give you a brief a programming language is a something that you would need anyway right you can choose any object oriented programming language that you want to start learning or in case you want to go into another field for example python is chosen uh 
as the first choice if you are going into data science or data analysis but if you're getting into software a lot of people prefer object oriented languages like java c sharp or c++ but again you research what programming language that you want to learn for example if you want to get into front end you can start learning javascript with html css and other uh, other things that you want to learn. for example react is there angular is there right now database management you would need to learn an sql uh, tool for example like mysql or postgresql so that you can build a software and you can connect it to a database uh, you can also learn no sql databases um, there are also other data- databases right now there is graph uh, there are data warehouses so you can learn more concepts but initially you just have to learn a basic sql database how to work with it how to connect to your software uh, so that's all you need to know at the start and then software development tools yes you need an id you need a development platform where you're going to sit and code for example right now there is ai so you can you can download cursor and use it if not there is vs code there are so many other software tools that you can use and then specializations that is basically what you want to do you want to do front end you want to do back end you want to be a full stack developer or you want to develop mobile applications particularly or you want to develop just uh, for example just a windows developer who builds applications just on windows operating system so there are so many different specializations that you can choose from again these are some things which are to your choice but as an overall if you're just going with the software engineer tag you will need to be really good at one programming language you need to learn how databases work how networking works uh, basic computer science fundamentals are required to understand how software works right for example how apis work and apart from this you need to learn data structures and algorithms you need to learn system design this will help you clearing interview rounds now coming to ai skills as you can see there is ai powered development right now pretty much everybody is an ai powered developer right everybody is using ai to give them code snippets uh, the extensiveness of using ai is it differs according to a person some people might use it very less 20 to 30% of the time some person might be dependent on just generating code around 70 to 80 percent and write uh, or make corrections to the ai code to make it compatible uh, so it completely depends what ai power development is already in full pace uh, platform engineering devsecops devsecops is basically uh, devops including the security aspect so devsecops is not necessary immediately to become a software engineer but eventually you can add it to your skill set and then finally ai native engineering that is you build ai native software uh, these are some skills now the skills on the left side the technical skills is all you need to clear jobs but right now learning few ai tools and ai skills is also required that will help you kind of get into a company that is right now using ai to develop software right apart from this you also have soft skills communication presentation uh even though you have built a feature how exactly you're going to communicate it to a client or even your team members uh, matters a lot right cool so th- these are the skill sets now moving to the next part this question is asked a lot of times should you still grind dsa or lead code in the era of ai the short answer is yes interview readiness still counts you would have seen a recent news from google that Sun- sundar pichai announced that they're going to bring in in person interviews back so this is going to cut down on a lot of cheating after ai tools have been introduced so obviously you will again need to grind dsa and system design and you will obviously need to also solve problems on lead code so that you can clear these interviews so make sure keep keep this thing out of your head that you don't need dsa or lead code in this era of ai as well because companies might just roll back to their previous interview processes and a company can change their interview process however they want so be prepared on whatever is currently trending right so now so basically core algorithmic and also problem solving skills still remain at the core of hiring a software engineer because the entire reason to hire a software engineer is for them to solve problems that the company is facing right and then there is balance this with real world coding uh anyway even though you are grinding dsa you are learning lead code but ai tools are still necessary eventually you get in then you will still use ai tools right so for that build projects using cloud using ai build a lot of projects that will help you get into the company even before they interview you they could see the types of projects that you have done right and finally engineer caution alongside ai productivity even though ai can generate quick fixes but you must understand test and optimize the code you can't simply get a code from ai and then just paste it and then expect it to run you would need to understand how that code works 
So to understand how that code works, you need the basics. You need to understand uh, a programming language. You need to understand data structures. Without that, you won't be understand what type, what code the AI tool just gave you. And if you simply blindly put it, that might become technical debt in the future, right? Next is the salary range of a software engineer. I'll just give a quick brief. You guys can just simply go to Glassdoor or Ambition Box, any uh, any tool that will give you the salary range and check it. Uh, this is just to give you an idea because at the end of the day, if you are studying and become uh, upskilling yourself in software engineering, you would want to get a job or do something in that particular domain. And this is the salary ranges uh, depending on the experience. And also this would change depending on the company as well. But this is an average range from 5 LPA to it can even go till 74 LPA and it can even go beyond that depending on your skill set. Right now we have come to the last part of the video, your step by step roadmap to becoming job ready in software engineering. Now, so the duration here is from one to four months, five to eight months, nine to 11, 12, 13. So these are ranges that I've provided. In case you wanna change it, it's completely up to you and completely up to the pace of your learning, right? But the stages are gonna be the same. Now, master fundamentals, this is the most basic. Pick up programming language, learn DSA, system design, and also learn the nooks of that particular programming language. For example, let's say you've chosen Java, learn the syntaxes of the, of the programming language, learn what does every single small aspect do? What does private do? What does public do? What exactly is void main? Understand those basics and fundamentals because that will help you. What are classes? What are objects? If you learn all of these fundamental concepts before getting into the more technical concepts, with this understanding, everything else is gonna get much easier, right? Now, again, DSA, do a deep dive, learn data structures, learn stacks, queues, heaps, trees, pretty much all data structures that you can possibly learn, learn all of them, solve more problems in them. And also system design is important. System design, you can keep it for later in case you are not very comfortable in learning it in the fundamentals phase. For fundamentals, you can simply keep learning programming language, solving problems and DSA, right? Next, building projects. Once you are pretty much set, in a programming language, you know how to use uh, databases now, you know pretty much all the basics around developing software. Now start building real projects. Start with a very small project to just understand or test your skills. Once that is done, implement a cloud native project. Uh, that is a project that is running on cloud. That is learn AWS, uh, learn basics of AWS, you can learn EC2, you can learn RDS, uh, you can learn S3, you can learn about storage, you can learn about servers. Uh, after learning all of these concepts, you can simply try hosting a website or an app on AWS and see how it runs uh, or an AI infused applications, uh, an application where you are integrating an AI feature and also microservices and deploy on platforms. So you can learn about Docker, you can learn about Kubernetes, you can learn about containers. This is a bit more detailed, but to start off building projects, start with the most basic project that you want to create and then move into bit more detailed projects. For example, if you're into front end, you will have to build websites, you'll have to build uh, You'll have to build really good looking websites. If you're going to uh, build for an app, then again, you'll have to have a really good design. Now, if you're coming to backend, you'll have to understand networking. You'll have to be really, really strong in a lot of aspects. For example, let's say you have databases running in multiple countries. Your product is live in two different countries. Now you will have database servers running in both of these countries. But again, if somebody is searching for something from country A, they can't get the data from country B servers. They will only have to get it from country A servers, right? So all of these concepts you can simply learn. Uh, it's not a very hard thing to learn in theory, but when you are trying to apply it in practice, you will learn it even better. Next, embrace AI tooling. Now, again, as mentioned, AI is everywhere. AI coding assistants, AI IDEs are everywhere. So start using them because companies are gonna implement anyway because they are the ones who have created these tools. Uh, for example, Google has Gemini, uh, OpenAI has GPT, there is Cloud Code. Uh, so they are gonna push you using AI. There is Microsoft as Copilot. So in case you're getting into these companies, they are gonna use these AI tools anyway. So there's no point in you not learning AI tools, right? And then prepare for interview. So once you're really good at the basics, that is DSA, 
you're good at system design now you're good at the computer science fundamentals that is networking uh, how databases work uh, so you learn all of these things and also you learn certain principles like you can learn solid principles um, you can learn certain concepts like cap theorem right once you're all set then start preparing for interviews now it depends on the company some companies will have a behavioral round and then they will have a technical round some companies might have a coding round and then a technical round and then maybe a system design round so it depends on the company accordingly you start preparing for interviews right and the main thing you'll have to make sure is make sure your communication is good it doesn't matter how you speak english it just matters how you communicate your problem uh, your solution for the problem that they asked very effectively that's it and finally apply and upskill simultaneously now you're prepared for interviews you're slightly confident you've done mock interviews now you've started applying and you've started getting interviews while you're doing that certain job descriptions certain job roles will ask for certain skill sets for example a front end role might ask for let's say if that company is using react already in their systems they will ask you to know react they will at least ask you or they would at least expect you to know a little bit of react right uh, so accordingly if you are comfortable in that job description you are comfortable in all the required skill sets that they have asked go ahead in case you just miss one particular skill set and if you are really interested in the job role start up skilling simultaneously while you apply you will be able to take it on right So that's it this is the road map to become a software engineer in 2026 if you just went back 3 years or 4 years ago this particular embrace ai tooling part is not even present right but don't straight away start off with using ai learn the basics without ai learn problem solving without ai and then you start using ai to help you become a better software engineer and if you want to learn more about certain concepts for example let's say you want to become a software engineer and you want to join microsoft or you want to look into how to tackle system design in mang or in a mang interview we have free master classes that run on the scaler's website just go to scaler.com/events and select the master class that you want to attend and register for it so thank you meet you in another video